Hey guys, welcome to part two of the Hollow Reef Aquarium aquascaping build kit. We're just overviewing everything in here and in part two, we're gonna be doing our live rock aquascaping, going over how to place all of your equipment and we're gonna be doing our first fill up and getting salty by mixing our salt water into that RODI tap water and getting this cycle going. So let's jump into it and get to scaping. What we did last night is my wife and I, we sat down and we did our live rock aquascape. Originally, I was going to do this aquascape on camera for this YouTube video, but I remembered that my wife and I, we got this, you know, Hello Reef kit specifically for her, her and I to enjoy, you know, as a couple. It was something fun that we both can do. We're both fish nerds, so we can nerd out over it and do it together. And what we did is we sat down on the couch, you know, we put on some music, we opened up the Hello Reef Connect app and we watched all the aquascaping tutorial guides that they have on there. And let me tell you what, it was an absolute blast. My wife and I ended up nerding out for a little over three hours building this reef rock setup. There were some laughs, there were some frustrations, there were some debates on what scape looked the best, but initially we ended up with this type of cove layout. Now, mind me, I'm not uh, super up to all the, you know, salt water scaping guides, but I believe what this is called is more of a you know wall with a little cove so after you know doing some research watching all those videos mariah my wife really liked the the cove idea and my personal favorite was having a tall you know wall that looked like you know the roof barrier so you can put some corals all over it uh, but my wife really liked the little coral the cove area so our little clownfish can you know swim out in here and feel safe and have a great time in it so if you're looking for something fun that, you know, your best friend, your partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, or husband, you need something fun to do, this Hello Reef experience is awesome to do. It's really just fun to sit down, have fun, nerd out, and just get salty and make your first saltwater tank. So what we're gonna do before we set up our equipment, we're gonna glue and epoxy all of our reef rock and let it cure and sit. So while we're putting our equipment on, it'll give this a good decent amount of time to harden and cure so when we move it over into our tank it doesn't totally collapse so let's get into epoxying there we go so after you went ahead and you know watched the aquascaping guide over at the hello reef connect app you're going to want to go ahead grab box number four box number four is going to have our gloves and our epoxy in there bada bing bada boom and what these are gonna do, obviously the gloves are to protect our hands from getting any epoxy or glue on us. So we're gonna obviously gonna wanna put these gloves on. And fits just like a glove. I love it. And all you're gonna need with your epoxy is you're gonna wanna go get a little knife so we can cut this into sections. When they send you your rocks, they send you, I believe, six pieces of live rock. And what they recommended in the Hello Reef Connect videos is if your rocks are a little bit too bulky or you, you, know, you just can't get what you want made, take a chisel and a hammer and you can break apart some of the rocks. I went ahead and broke apart two of my really bulkier ones. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to try to cut this epoxy into small little sections and what you do with epoxy is you roll it up into your hand until it's a nice coralline color and you shove it in between all of your major connecting points on your rock. Well, we just finished epoxying and gluing our hardscape. It was um, very interesting. It's the first time that I've really used an epoxy before. I'm more of a super glue enjoyer, uh, if you may. Um, so with the epoxy, what you're gonna do is you wanna let it sit and cure for up to 24 hours. But if you're anything like me and you're a little impatient, what I like to do is grab some of Bulk Reef Supply Super Glue and you can, you know, just put little dots of super glue wherever you feel like your structure may need it the most. When they explained how to build your aquascaping guide to me, they said you don't want it built like Fort Knox, but you definitely don't want, you know, any snails, um, any urchins or anything moving around and knocking one of these rocks over and potentially hurting one of your livestock or animals in your tank. So I just went ahead and did about four or five little points. It seems pretty secure to me. 
While we let this cure and harden a little bit, we're gonna pop on over to our tank and we're gonna start putting all of our equipment on and making sure all of that is set up and ready to run. So when we get it into the room today, we can fill it up with some salt water and we'll be ready to rock and roll. First thing right up here is our sponge blocks. They're gonna give you two of these. Reason being is you only need one for this to operate. They give you an extra one just if this ever, you know, ends up running out or just not working well, you can replace it with a fresh brand new one. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your sponge block. It's gonna fit very snug in here, but you just need one and you're just gonna press it in the middle chamber all the way down to the bottom. Just like so. And they include your biomedia rings already in a little bag. It's nice and perfect for you. I'm just gonna toss that in there. Same thing with this. They give you a nice little bag with some activated carbon little logs in there. Same thing, nothing too complicated. Just pop that on right there. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and open up number five, the more equipment box. And I'm looking for our light and our heater out of here. There will be some other items in here that you won't need yet, but save them for the side because we will need them here in a little bit. There's that heater. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, and then also this is another item that we can set aside. We're only gonna be putting this in once we have everything filled up with water, so we can set that off to the side. First thing I wanna get into is my, if I can say it right, Team Ciche, uh, Micra, what is this? Micra Plus Multifunction Pump. This is my first time using this type of a pump, but when I was watching the video on the Hello Connect app, there is a flow thing here, and what you wanna do is make sure it's on the highest flow where you see that plus sign. So just make sure that's all ready to go. Get this all unraveled. And in the box, gonna give you your little suction cups. You wanna go ahead and grab those because it also has your tube adapter. So you're gonna wanna pop that little guy right in there, just like so. Your little suction cups are just gonna get squeezed into the little slots. Bada bing, bada boom. And then what they do for us, which is super cool, is they actually give us our you know, little tube that's pre-cut to size. So you're just gonna pop this guy onto here. You're gonna grab this little nozzle doodad. And how this works is it unscrews from here. So what we can do is we can attach, well, we can throw this into our last chamber Make sure that slides down in there. And then this part, gonna wanna just back and forth movement, get it in there as best you can until it's nice and snug. You're gonna wanna have this flat face facing the little hole in there. And what this guy is gonna do is go through the hole and screw into that pipe, just like so. So if you look, I can maybe do this for you guys. So that pump is just, or it's just gonna sit in there perfectly. And then the little tube with the outflow nozzle just seats right in, screws into the glass hole, and that's it for the pump. I'm telling you guys, Hello Reef made it easy for us. They're not throwing us any crazy hard equipment. They're not giving us anything that's really complicated or hard to learn. This is really just easy, fun, beginner stuff just to get into saltwater keeping and fish take, keep taking care of your saltwater fish. So let's keep on going. This is the first time I'm checking out the Eheim heater but it looks very sturdy and Eheim is a brand that has been around forever. That's pretty
pretty cool. They even give it a little uh, protection thing for shipping so it doesn't get banged around in the box. I hope that's what that's for. All right. With your heater, you're gonna wanna put that into where we put your sponge block and all of your media and your carbon. So we're just gonna set that guy right down in here. And you wanna make sure that you can access this top part because that's how you adjust. Uh, that's how you adjust your temperature. I believe you just move this little red nozzle around to pick the temperature that you wanna be at. Beautiful. And then filter sock. All right, so I've heard a lot about these. These are filter socks. This is something that we really don't have a lot of in the freshwater world. And what it is, is just a super, super fine filter. Um, and they call it a sock because obviously it looks like a little white sock. And what it does is the water is going to enter through this first and it has to push through this incredibly dense filter material. So what it does is it helps polish your water, get out any micro particles of debris, and it's super easy to reuse and wash these. I believe you can just throw these into the washing machine with no soap and just clean it up really, really nice. Uh, but these are also really, really cheap as well. So what we're gonna do, grab our little, I don't know what we're gonna call this. We'll call it a filter sock holder. And I believe we push this through the bottom. Just like so. And they told me there's only one way for this little square thing to fit in here. So if it doesn't work one way, obviously we'll pop it the other way. And as you can see, that was the wrong way. So we'll put it in that way. And look at that. So right here, your water's gonna come in through your grate and it's just gonna spiral down into your filter sock. And then I know it's kind of hard to see because of the glare, but the water is gonna rise up, fall over this glass right here. It's gonna fall into our heater and filter media bay. And then it's going to rise up onto this other side into our pump we just put in and it's going to return the water back into the system. Super easy and that's just setting up the filters and I mean, that only took us what, like five, 10 minutes. So that is just awesome. It is an absolute breeze. Every part of this Hello Reef uh, kit has just been a blast. There hasn't been any parts where I'm like, oh man, I'm frustrated. I can't figure it out. I can't do it. If I've had any questions, I've jumped over to the Hello Reef app and they've answered it right up. And I've been able to get right back into putting together my setup. Look at that adorable little AI blade light. I've used Aqua Illumination in their freshwater blades and they're phenomenal. So I'm really excited that I have the black saltwater blade for this Hello Reef kit. Let's just make sure it's centered. That looks pretty good to me. All right, and I guess last but not least, we can throw in our CJ Voyager Nano Stream Pump. What these are gonna do is corals and saltwater fish like a lot faster of a flow. And for corals to stay healthy and feed in the water column, it needs a lot of water to be pushing around that tank so they can have access to everything that's in that water column. So you're gonna wanna have to get a little tiny stream pump and what this guy does is it looks like it's a magnet on the back. So we can somehow get this guy in there. Just like that, you'll hear that little click and this is a magnet. So we're gonna do that. And then we can play with the cords later, but that's about maybe where we'll put it. We might put it on the back here. We might move it around on the side. It being that magnet just makes it super easy. So if you see some dead spots in your tank, you can move this around and take care of that dead spot right away. So that's pretty much all the equipment. Our hardscape, uh, well, our live rock aquascape, excuse me, is all hardened and settled. We're gonna try to lift it up extremely carefully. We're going to place the aquascape into our tank, get that live sand poured in there, and we're gonna do it 
We're gonna get salty. We're gonna pour some water in there and get this all powered up for you. All right, guys, we just finished with all of our equipment. We got our filter sock, we got our heater, we got our filter media, we got our sponge block, and we got our little pump in there. Next, we're gonna take our aquascape that is all cured and hardened, hopefully carry it over here nice and gently, pour some sand in here, get it placed, make sure it fits, and then we're gonna carry this back into my wife's room and get it all set up and pretty and get salty and make this a salt water tank. All right, seems sturdy-ish. I don't love it. Woo, it's a little nerve wracking, but we're here. Boom. And that is the key right here. The aquascaping template. Use this guys. When you open up your Hello Reef kit and you're gonna start scaping, utilize this area. If you see here, it says too close to glass. So they give you your perfect scaping area. And so when my wife and I sat down and built this scape, as you can see, it has that perfect line around the back, the front, the sides, and it just fits perfectly. That's because the included Hello Reef aquascaping template, absolute lifesaver. I might actually start making these for some of my other tanks for some of my freshwater builds, because I think that's just a perfect idea. So Hello Reef, I'm taking that idea from you guys. Let's get our last little detail stone in here. I'm using this guy in the front like this, so it creates some depth. This tiny little rock cluster up against the big rock cluster is just gonna make this look so much bigger and taller. So we're gonna place that there. Sand time. And as always, you've seen on all of my videos and all my tanks, I'm a massive Carib Sea fan. They do it right. All their sands and gravels and rocks are just top notch. Really happy that I'm gonna be able to use the saltwater carob sea for the first time. I believe we need some scissors or this knife right here. So this is live sand. If you look in here, the sand is a little bit wet. That is because it's filled with some dormant beneficial bacteria and it comes with basically all the things that you need to mimic, you know, the ocean. It's gonna have a little pieces of shells in there and just all the stuff we need to get this cycle started. Ooh, and this is a good point too. You always wanna look out for our bio magnet clarifier. You're gonna to wanna to save this for when you start filling it up with salt water because once we mix the salt in and we fill this with water, your tank will become a little cloudy and Carib Sea thought ahead and they give you this little packet. So save this off to the side and don't forget about it. I probably could have poured some of the sand in first, but I wanted to make sure our little rock structure fit perfectly before I just opened up the bag of sand, because once you open this sand up, it will dry out and not be good anymore. So we're just gonna have some fun with it. Start playing with some sand, getting our hands wet. And we can make any final adjustments as needed. So now what I recommend doing is before you start putting all the water in there, just do your best to make a level base. It does not have to be perfect, but just start moving around the sand, flatten it down, moving her around. Don't be afraid to get your hands a little sandy. All right, well, we safely moved our Hello Reef 15 gallon tank into my wife's room. And luckily we did not have any major disasters with our aquascape falling over. So right now I'm just gonna grab all of our cords here, 
get all the little twisty ties off, run that down the back and into our power strip. Keep in mind, you don't wanna plug anything in until you have water in the system. Uh, the heater and the pump and all that stuff, it needs water to function properly. So we're gonna go ahead, get all our cords nice and ran back through the bottom here. And I'll probably end up cable managing it later. Just my OCD self, I always like to have all my cables nice and tidy. Something that Hello Reef Connect reminds you to do is add drip loops. What drip loops are is when you have your all your cords going down the back of your tank, you don't want them all just going vertically downward. You want them to go down and then have some part where they go up. So if water starts dripping down these cords, it's gonna stop right at the loop here and the water's gonna run off here instead of dripping all the way up into your power uh, plug, wherever that is. So it's always good to have a little bit of drip loop. Um, it just prevents, you know, any catastrophes from happening. You know, with these tanks, it is a body of water and while we're cleaning, maintaining it or anything, sometimes water splashes out and can make a mess. So just planning ahead can really make a difference there. Get this down here. And in box number five is gonna be mainly what we're working with for the last part of this. This box did get a little cluttered while I was doing everything in there, but it's a good place to hold everything. I am just looking for our Voyager little stream pump here, and I'm looking for our aqua illumination light plug. And we're gonna grab the US version light plug here, which is that guy. Let's see how that goes in. Little pop, love it. So the light we can probably plug in because we don't need we don't need water to run the light. Set all that stuff to the side. Ooh, that saltwater blue looks so good. Look at that. We have a saltwater tank in the fish room. I love it. Let's get some water in there. All right, so four saltwater tanks you're gonna wanna need pure RO water or distilled water. What that means is it has a zero TDS. It's been fully filtered, so it has no chlorines, chloramines, or any weird thing that tap water may have in it. And what we do with this distilled RODI water, pour it into your tank, and then we mix in the salt for the first time. Generally, you don't just pour the salt in to your salt water tank. Down the road, when we wanna re-add salt water, we're gonna be mixing into these buckets. But for our first pour, we're just gonna grab some RO water, fill this bad boy all the way up. When pouring in your RODI water for the first time, I'm gonna recommend pouring it into your back cartridges here or putting down some paper towels in the front here when you pour it. You don't wanna disturb all that sand and you know, pouring in water pretty fast, that can happen. So I'm just gonna gently pour our water in back here. And last but not least, we don't wanna forget about our CJ stream pump. We're gonna go ahead and get this put in. And obviously we don't know where our dead spots are right now, but I'm just gonna put it in where they recommend, you know, throwing it in. They just recommend putting it in one of the corners just to help push this water around some more. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. 
So we got water in here. It looks like all of our equipment is running awesomely. We're gonna go ahead and turn it all off. We're gonna remove our filter sock, grab a little measuring cup here, and we're gonna measure five cups of the, uh, the Aqua Forest reef salt, and we're gonna pour it into where our filter sock chamber is. So let's get in there. go that's our first first ever cup of salt going into our very first salt water tank a fun little thing that uh, Max and myself were talking about we were wondering can you use regular table salt in a saltwater aquarium total newbie question and we found out you cannot uh, reef salt is specially formulated that contains all the minerals um, and just everything you need to make it most like an ocean. And you can't use, you know, regular table salt. Doesn't work, so don't try it. But you know we had to ask. And there's five. So there's our five cups of salt. In the, uh, you know, explaining of adding salt, it will make your tank a little cloudy and it will also, you should see some of the harder salt particles lingering around for a couple of days. They will break down totally normal and natural, but to help like what we were doing earlier with our live sand, you wanted to save this biomagnet clarifier because this is gonna help speed up the process to make our reef tank crystal clear. So this, you just wanna get it and you can pour it anywhere in the tank and we can turn everything back on now. This is just so fun. I'm experiencing something new in this hobby for the first time, and it's just bringing back that first time excitement that I remember having when I was just getting into freshwater. I remember just having so many questions about what are freshwater plants, what are you know freshwater water parameters, all the fish you can put into it. And you know, after doing it for a lot of years and doing it on Instagram and all that, you kind of run out of that excitement sometimes for just the new questions. And just looking at this after I filled it up, I already have hundreds of questions. You know, what type of fish can go in here? What type of corals can go in here? How often do I do water changes? You know, how do I do all the salt mixing and everything? And I am just so excited to jump head in to the Hello Reef Connect and just absolutely nerd out tonight over all the information and research we can get.